much for joining us on About That. I'm Marga Ortigas, and on this episode, we're speaking to our very first male guest. That was completely unintentional, but it seems we've only featured women thus far. So let's remedy that. I'd like to introduce you to Miguel Castro, a Spanish video journalist slash cameraman who's worked across the globe for CNN International. Now in his 40s, Miguel's just left his job and moved back to his hometown in Spain with his Brazilian wife after almost two decades away. Oh, and he's also a new father. Definitely a man at a crossroads. When my son was born, was thir- I was 39 and my wife was 37. It was a good point for both of us, you know. She also had spent quite a lot of her life moving, exploring jobs, uh, being in different countries in Argentina, in the Middle East. And uh, we both got together at a point where we both wanted to do the family and, and we that was a conscious step that we wanted to take. One thing I think I perceived is that in that line of work, you are... I'm going to say punished, but I'm not going to say it's not as bad as that, but it is it is um, almost held against you that you have a family and a small child. And, right. you know, in a new job, they realize that maybe you won't be as keen to travel as if you didn't have a, a family. And um, it's required for you, as you say, to almost be solitary and want to be in every yes. difficult place and uh, at any short notice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And um, yes, once, you know, like one thing I have uh, been grateful about the last few months and um, since I got here and even towards the end of my assignment, you know, like I, I was able of spending a lot of time with, with my song and, you know, like uh, that is something I enjoy. I, I, I have enjoyed a lot. I want to be part of, of the upbringing of my child is not, I don't want to be an absent father at, at all, you know, and uh, and it gives me, it's, it's a reward of a completely different kind that I particularly choose to enjoy, you know, being around home and taking him to the park and, and doing things with him, you know, and I, didn't, I wouldn't want to, at this point, I'm so happy I don't have to be traveling for six weeks at a time or a month and disappear and then come back, yes. you know, like the couple of times I did it since, I, since he was born, at this st- at this age, it's really funny. It's like you go just for two, three weeks, and when you come back, it's a completely different little dude. You know, <laughs> he's grown up. He's saying different things, and he, you know, he's not too happy about you having gone away. So I'm happy that I'm here. And it's also it, when you again, right? You think men in their forties, on the reverse of that, it's that that's when they might have their midlife crisis, and that's when you know men might then want to be on their own, or those that have families feel like uh, some sort of youth has passed them by. And yet here you are beginning your family. Were you afraid of anything at this, you know, becoming a father at uh, this point in your life? Especially when, as you said, you have left the job that you had been in for almost two decades. It was very scary. I'm not going to tell you. Since I left university, this is the one job I had practically, no? So, yes, nearly two decades of working in one place, suddenly uh, having to find a new direction and all of that. Yes, it does. It, it is difficult. It's a difficult decision. But then let me tell you, talk first, you know, about, you were you mentioned about age. You know, um, um, I find myself not alone in the situation of being a, 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 a new father in, in my 40s. I think in many people I know in, in Europe, in Spain especially, lots of people start fatherhood very, very late. I mean, late 30s to early 40s is very, very common, in fact. I, th- I think that what you were mentioning of the, of the of, of midlife crisis Applied more to to a generation where the, the, the what was expected from them was to very soon you know finish college, start a family, settle down, and then you know farther on the the road they are questioning is this what I wanted to do with my life? I think we found a bit more freedom on you know you could I think you, it, would, it would be fair to say that it, there was a, a bit more freedom on choosing your own timing and and the, and the lifestyle you wanted to have for longer and maybe less pressure of expectations were put upon us. So maybe you, that's why we are not having that, the need of having that midlife crisis. True. And on, you took a on, very different path. Yeah. 
Or maybe my midlife crisis is in the 60s. I don't know. We will talk <laughs> again then if you want. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But like, as you said, no, you, you, you've returned to Spain. Uh, you now find yourself having to leave the job that you've had for nearly two decades. What are you expecting to do at this point? Or what have you given yourself the freedom to feel right now? Are you looking for something else straight away? Uh, you have a child depending on you, you know, as the, the, in your, as the man in your 40s uh, with a wife who isn't from Spain and, and you clearly are the native there. What concerns have you got having made this giant move? Oof. Loads, lots of concerns. And, uh, you know, like it goes up and down, you know, like some days you are feeling great and you're feeling strong and you think that, and some other days you're feeling like you're in complete panic mode and you're like, oh, shit, what have I done, yeah. you know? But I think that is quite quite common, you know? And uh, the thing I keep telling myself to reassure myself and and me and my wife, we do this to each other, is like, yes. you know, try to remember why why we're doing this and thinking that I'm pretty sure that once the, the hardest part, which is right now, you know, in the next two years, we, we are over that, you know, we are going to find the stability in a stability and a happiness that is going to be much better. One thing that, you know, like I'm pretty happy about having done this step now is I have seen uh, during many years, I have seen colleagues, friends that, you know, they become unemployed in their early to mid 50s. When I think it's way harder, you know, like right. I want to say, you know, being optimistic, we are 40, you know. We are in our forties. We are young. You know, we are still adaptable. We can still get, gain new skills. You can do n- new things. You have a lot of time before you know, like retirement, and to think and to do planning and 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 and, and find a way. And in this case, what I wanted to do, especially, was try to. I would like to try to not be depending on a company or anybody else for my uh, financial stability. You know, try to set up my own business or trying to do some something in which it only depends on me. Right. Uh, so I can, if I manage to do that, I know, you know, like you, I mean, you will always have to keep learning and adapting to the market as it changes, but it's just you and you don't depend on the, the industry where you are having a crisis or the company where you are wanting to change the directions and you're not being able to adapt to their direction. Whatever it is, you know that uh, is a lot. A lot of um, it increases the the lack the, the, the lack of control that you have over yeah. your own life, you know. Yes. And I'm, uh, it's gonna be hard, you know. And I'm, I'm, I'm most of the days I'm really really scared, but you know I I, ch- I chose to to believe in myself. What is it that keeps you, like as you said, you know, there are moments of the ups and the downs and the fears, and what is it that you do? to help yourself feel better about where you're at or where you're headed? Uh, when I was living in China, I, didn't, I never did Tai Chi, but it's, it's, a, it's a very nice and gentle way of like, do something. And, and it's not exactly ma- as meditation, but it does get give you some of the yes. benefits of it. You know what I mean? It's a very gentle uh, art form, if you want to call it that, that is um, it's very good for you, both physically and physically. And spiritually and, and that and I hope that it's going to help me uh, one thing I'm going to start doing next week as well is um, uh, volunteering Is there any reason in particular that you wanted to do volunteering right now? It's re- rewarding you know and it makes you feel useful which I think is is one of the of the difficulties in a, in a transition period of, like this you know like you don't go to work every day so sometimes you feel that your time is not very well used and that doesn't make you feel very good about it right? So that that helps definitely also uh, with that managing the fear of the change and all of that. Learning to manage that fear is one of the things I think I'm I'm learning the most, you know, and that not allowing it to block you because otherwise you don't you don't get anything done. And but generally speaking, it's also focusing on positive things, you know, and like seeing it as what it is. It's a challenge, and uh, no matter how much you struggle at, in that precise point, you're gonna feel better about it. Yeah, like you know, like two years down the line or three years down the line. I came out here to try to find some inspiration to do new things. But you know what? The, the most interesting part is that giving you the chance to to face new obstacles and hurdles, which is a great opportunity for, for growth. You know, if you if you stay in the comfortable, you know, like just doing what you know how to do and just keep on, you know, like uh, spinning the wheel and going forward without 
putting yourself in difficult situations, there's not much opportunity for growth there, you know, and uh, we, I think we're trying both to appreciate that. You, you were saying as well that, you know, you, your back was aching, uh, you know, obviously with the job that you, you were doing and having to carry all the heavy equipment and all of that, the body begins to feel the pain. And, and has that kind of brought on thoughts of like, made you confront your mortality as well, that, you know, you're getting older, the body is changing, uh, life is different, and the world is different. Has that caused you to kind of re-examine your space in it? Yeah. It's not as much the mortality, but I think that one of the most scary parts, I think, is the fragility, you know, that, that brought it on. Because if you are depending on physical work to earn a living and suddenly you're, you start to feel aches and problems in your back and whatever suddenly brings, brings you brings home that, whoa, maybe I cannot do this forever or maybe I cannot depend on, on, on my physical ability forever, you know, and makes me feel a bit more fragile and a bit more, you know, and that, that's, uh, that was part also that of, the, of what is there. Yeah, I mean, like, we're not getting any younger, but I think anybody, like, it doesn't matter how your what your body is telling you. You in your mind, you just feel the same as twenty years ago, right? So, <laughs> <laughs> what for you would be the most important lesson that you'd like to teach your son from everything that you've seen and all your travels around the world? Uh, what has been the most important thing you have learned that you then want to pass on? Wow, <laughs> that's a that's a big one. I haven't thought about it. You know, funnily enough, I haven't thought about just one lesson. I think, you know, like one one of the things I have I have learned perhaps traveling and that, you know, and and meeting different cultures. You know, you I think I I like is when is learning and developing the ability to connect with very different kind of people, you know, and uh, how sometimes in your travels you are in some random place where you, there's no common language between you and people there and you're traveling on your own I mean I mean especially when you're traveling along and you still manage to to connect and make yourself being understood and sometimes so common language and you're still smiling and laughing and you have a, a jolly jolly old time with 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 locals and that that uh, you know like I think something that is something I would like to to pass on to him you know like the idea of um, ability of seeing, looking at anybody in the eye and, and feeling this connection and feeling that, you know, like most of the difference that we perceive are really just constructs. They're not, they're not real, you know, it's uh, your culture, your ethnicity, your race, your social standing doesn't really make that much difference. You know? It's just something artificial. Yes, I can. I totally imagine that. And as you said, you know, the ability to being able to, to look someone in the eye and, and speak to them in a way that you can connect as human beings. And I know that that's also why, you know, I you were happy to speak to us and I'm very grateful. And, you know, a large part of, of doing this podcast began with wanting to speak to women who were of a certain age and going through changes and transitions. And yet we have found that we do have quite a few male listeners, you know, who either seem to be going through the same thing or maybe wanting to uh, understand what their partners might be going through or their friends or their sisters. Now, what would your message be to women who are going through this? Um, uh, who might either be going through it at the same time as their, if they have male partners or brothers might be going through it as well. Is there something that you see would connect the genders or people who are going through any kind of major transitions in their life? This is maybe a little bit of wishful thinking, but I think there's less and less differences between genders. Well, I would like to think that that's, that's what's actually happening. And I think from a professional point of view, and then, um, you know, that old dichotomy of uh, males being the breadwinners and females being at home and dealing with, more with family, thankfully that is changing and that is, that is evolving. And I think with something that has happened to me uh, is that I wanted to dedicate more time to my family and more time to my child, which maybe in the past that would be a very female thing to to a female approach to your career, just be willing to to 
put a break on your career so you can actually spend some time, you know, and, and reshape your life, you know, taking into account. So I think there's, and I'm hoping to think that there's more and more things that connect us now and that are the same. Still, you know, like, what can I say? Have patience with us, you know, like, we still don't get 100% what your situation is and, like, probably you won't get 100% what our situation is sometimes. One thing I wanted also to bring up with you about... Um, Yes. You remember you mentioned before um, my fears coming back here. You know, the, the reverse reverse culture culture shock is slightly slightly hard. You know, it's very, it's weird because something that is familiar or used to be familiar is not familiar anymore. But one thing really really worrying me coming back to Europe is that my my wife is uh, Afro Brazilian, so my kid is 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 part black. He's mixed race. You no. Know? You're worried about prejudice. There is a lot of racism. I mean. In, in Europe, I cannot teach him, for example, how to grow up a, a black man in a in a white society. You know, I know he's mixed race, but may, many times he's going to be identified as 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 non-white at least. You know, and that may bring issues that I'm I'm concerned if I will be able of helping him. You know how to deal with them because I I haven't experienced them myself. My wife's uh, response generally is that. It is not like I don't face prejudice here in Brazil. It's not that we're going to be free of prejudice almost anywhere. So, you know, like, we'll just deal with it, like I have done all my life. And, yeah, yeah, I mean, I support that. It is not a very easy time, I think, to be a minority in any Western country right now. Generally speaking, we haven't faced, as of yet, any events where, you know, that made us uncomfortable or anything. I think we start to feel that we are in the right place at the right time, you know, which is, which is a nice feeling. Miguel, thank you very, very much for your time. And uh, hi to your wife and child, and, thank and you very good much. luck. Thank good you. luck. And it, it has, as you mentioned earlier, the partnership with your wife going through all of this together has been, I'm sure, very helpful for you, you know, that you're not going through this, all of this alone. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's, it's strengthening, you know, like two uh, standing together, you know, and that, that helps a lot. You know, and um, I actually don't know if uh, you being alone it might be easy in, in certain in certain um, aspects because you have to take other into consideration for your decisions. But definitely, you know, uh, it's I think it's a source of strength when you are doing things not just for yourself, but you are doing things for yourself and and your and your family. You know, and gives you more push to to keep going forward. I think so. It is wonderful, yeah. Thank you for your time too. It was nice catching up with you. We haven't talked for ages. Folks, thanks for joining our candid conversation with video journalist Miguel Castro, a new father in his 40s who's learned that it's okay to not have all the answers and has instead found a way to be comfortable with the questions. If there's anything Miguel's years on the road have taught him, it's to go with the flow even when trying to plant roots with a growing family. We'd also like to apologize for the quality of some of the audio and hope it wasn't too distracting. What can I say? Internet connections. I'm really sorry about that. But again, thank you for staying with us. We're also very grateful for your time. And for more insightful conversations, don't forget to follow us and subscribe. It would also be really helpful if you could rate and review us to keep us going. Hope you've been enjoying our episodes as much as we've enjoyed bringing them to you. Until next time.